Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on glutamate signaling. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, strokes and at how uh, strokes can lead to excitotoxicity. And this is what leads, basically, to neuronal death in strokes. Excitotoxicity is what actually happens to cause neurons to die, basically. Okay, so what is a stroke? Well, stroke has another fancy name. It's often, it, its fancy name is a cerebrovascular accident. So, cerebrovascular accident, often abbreviated to CVA for cerebro, C, vascular for A, a V, and A for accident. So, CVA. Right, uh, so um, basically what happens is that the blood supply to a portion of the brain goes down for some reason. So there are two reasons that this might happen. So if this is your blood vessel supplying a certain portion of the brain, there are two things that can lead to uh, its no longer delivering blood to that portion of the brain. So uh, either it could get occluded by something, so a uh, in some sort of clot might occur, uh, which uh, blocks the blood vessel. In that case, what you have suffered is an occlusive stroke. Uh, so an occlusive stroke means that the blood supply uh, went down because of some occlusion that was blocking the artery, so either uh, a, a thrombus that had formed in that portion of the blood vessel, or something that had um, come from another portion of the body. In that case, it's called a thromboembolus. So an embolus is any sort of um, any sort of particle, large particle, large large solid mass in the bloodstream that is being moved along in the blood, and basically it will continue to be moved along in the blood until it gets to a gets to a blood vessel that is too small for it to go through, and then it just ends up blocking that, so that's called a thromboembolus. Okay, so I'll just put that. So if, it, if the, if the occlusion occurs occurs because of um, a blood clot forming there and then, that is known as a thrombus. Okay, uh, if it occurs because um, because something, some sort of particle, particulate matter has come from another portion of the um, of the bloodstream and has just been uh, has just been moved into that uh, blood vessel, then it's called an embolus. And if the embolus happens to be a thrombus, i.e., it's a blood clot, then it would be called a thromboembolus. Uh, so there are lots of different types of emboli. Um, that don't necessarily have to be uh, actual thrombuses, so they don't actually have to be blood clots. Okay, so those are the sort of things that could lead to an occlusive stroke. There's also the possibility that you could have uh, an atherosclerotic plaque here that could get so bad that it actually um, completely occludes the artery, so atherosclerosis is another um, potential cause of occlusive stroke. And obviously, atherosclerotic plaques also have a tendency for thrombi to form on top of them, so these two are obviously linked. Right, uh, the other um, and rarer form of stroke, these are the general causes of stroke, but the rarer form of stroke is something known as the hemorrhagic stroke, and this is a bit more messy. Hem hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke. And this is basically where the blood vessel breaks. It breaks open and then starts bleeding inside the brain. And if it obviously, if it just splits in two, then the blood's going to squirt out all over the brain and it's not going to get, it's not going to continue going through this blood vessel and getting to the portion of the brain that it was originally supplying. So the portion of the brain that uh, is no longer getting blood. Um, that's going to basically um, become ischemic. It's going to get too little uh, blood going to it. Okay, so hemorrhagic strokes are rarer. Uh, they're generally seen actually in younger people, whereas occlusive strokes are seen in older people. And hemorrhagic strokes are uh, often the cause of hemorrhagic strokes, is people taking um, psychostimulants such as amphetamines are. Um, are notorious for causing hemorrhagic strokes because they cause blood pressure to go up so much. So any sort of drug which causes blood pressure to go up uh, substantially, such as amphetamines, another example is cocaine, uh, is going to cause, um, is, is going to risk hemorrhagic stroke because if the blood pressure gets too high then it might just burst the uh, blood vessels open basically. Uh, so 
Those are uh, the two main types of strokes. Anyway, the point is that some portion of the brain, some neuron, is not getting enough blood supply. And if some neuron doesn't get enough blood supply, what does that mean? What's going to happen to our neuron? So let's draw our neuron here. Okay, so here's our axon terminal of that neuron. Here's our axon. And let me just um, draw a few more dendrites. So this is another dendrite another dendrite and another dendrite okay so here's our here's our neuron here with a nucleus there right so if this new if this neuron is getting too little blood uh, then we say that it's ischemic ischemic just means that you're getting too little blood now what does ischemia generally lead to why does why does any tissue of the body actually need blood being delivered to it well it's because blood delivers oxygen and it delivers glucose now oxygen is the one that is good oxygen um too little oxygen being delivered to you is going to kill you quicker than too little glucose being delivered to you. They're both obviously essential for life, but it's the oxygen that this cell f uh, feels the loss of first, basically. So ischemia leads to too little oxygen, and the fancy name for too little oxygen arriving at this neuron is hypoxia. So the neuron becomes hypoxic. It's receiving too little oxygen. And if it doesn't get oxygen, then what ends up happening is that it can't respire. Uh, at least it can't respire aerobically. So what happens, basically, is that its production of ATP goes down. So ATP production goes down, and that's because in order to produce um, ATP, the, the best pathway for producing ATP is the normal respiratory pathway, aerobic respiration, i.e. you go through glycolysis, you go through the Krebs cycle, you then go through the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain requires oxygen, and if you don't have oxygen, that stops, and you don't produce ATP anymore. You can still make ATP through anaerobic respiration, which basically is just glycolysis on its own, However, the production is extremely inefficient. So what's going to start to happen is the ATP levels within this neuron are going to go down in response to the hypoxia. Now, what does ATP uh, levels going down cause in this neuron? Well, basically, it stops the sodium-potassium pump from working. It also stops the plasma membrane calcium ATPase uh, from working, or plasma membrane-associated calcium ATPase from working. And these are both going to have important effects in the axon terminal. So now let's draw the axon terminal bigger and see what's going to happen there. Okay, so here is our bigger axon terminal. Right, and I think to understand what's going to happen when the sodium potassium ATPase stops working, you need to um, you need to have a bit of we need to have a bit of a revision about how resting membrane potential is maintained across cell membranes. But we'll do that in the next video.